we approach the holidays, as we get into the new year. These are things that recognize that people are squeezed and we're there to help. Money that will help people buy the things they need and save up for the things they want. But I really hope that all parties in the House get behind this so we can pass this quickly, so that Canadians can get this relief as soon as December 14th. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau announcing his latest suite of affordability measures. While the Prime Minister has previously favoured targeted support for lower-income Canadians today, he's changing course in a big way, zeroing in on one big household line item that is not income-tested, the GST. Under today's proposal, all Canadians would get to buy the following items GST-free for two months starting on December 14th. You've got prepared foods like veggie trays, restaurant meals, dine-in and takeout, snacks like chips and candy, Beer, wine, cider, and pre-mixed alcoholic drinks below 7% alcohol by volume. You've got kids' clothing and footwear, car seats and diapers, toys like dolls, and even video game consoles, as well as books, puzzles, and Christmas trees. Plus, the feds say if you had a net income under $150,000 in 2023, you can expect a check for $250, which will be given in April. The feds estimate that'll go to 18.7 million Canadians. But this will all require legislation getting through the House of Commons, which has been deadlocked in procedural paralysis for near, nearly rather two months. Here's how the opposition is responding. And today what we have is a two-month temporary tax trick that will not make up for the permanent quadrupling carbon tax. The Liberals informed us that they had caved to our demands. But they included a Liberal letdown. This is temporary, and it doesn't include the monthly bills. I'm clearly against the idea of a prime minister who says, I will give you money in order for you to consider voting for me. Terry Beach is the federal minister of Citizen Services. Hi, Minister. Pleasure to welcome you to our show. Thanks for making the time. Hi, Vashi. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, in May, Minister, the Prime Minister said exactly this. One of the fundamental challenges around affordability is they would love to say, well, you know what, we just need more money. Can you send us more benefits or send us an extra $1,000 a month? As soon as you do that, inflation goes up by exactly that amount. Uh, Minister, why is your government doing exactly what the Prime Minister said it would not six months ago? Well, I mean, we're in a different place six months ago. Um, in the last year, we've actually stayed within the inflationary target for uh, in all of 2024. We've seen that uh, wages have outpaced inflation for the last 21 months. And now we're in a place uh, with today's announcement where we have the fiscal room uh, to be able to announce a very exciting $6 billion, actually more than $6 billion tax cut that is really focused on middle class working people. And I think... Uh, at this time where Canadians, you know, uh, are appreciating that we're in a lower inflationary environment, but really haven't felt the benefit of that directly, that this is really going to hit home. So when you say that the inflationary environment is different, in May, the, when the Prime Minister made those statements, it, the rate of inflation was 2.9 percent, also well within the Bank of Canada's uh, target range. So what is so different now? Well, I mean, at that point, you're only within a couple of months. Um, I think the other great thing about this particular program is how it's targeting. So we've actually looked at ways to make life more affordable through a whole bunch of different programs, whether it's child care, farm care, dental care, etc. Um, but it's been very hard to target specifically working middle class people. This is going to the, the, the $250 benefit, which is the bulk of this, 75 percent of the measures that we're announcing today, is going to go directly to 18.7 million working middle class professionals. And that's a really great way of targeting a group of people that really need this benefit right now. So you think it's a targeted approach to send a check to 18.7 million Canadians worth $5 billion? You would call that, you would classify that targeted? Oh, absolutely. Because unlike dental care, which has only benefited seniors and children to date, I mean, we'll be seeing the 18 to 64 year olds in 2025. When I knock on doors in my community, I have a lot of people that go, I see these affordability measures. I read the flyer that you produce every 30 days. But, you know, my family's working really hard, too, and we haven't seen a benefit, even though that we're struggling with affordability. This measure is speaking directly to those people. Uh, with all due respect, though, Minister, when I have interviewed your cabinet colleague, Finance Minister Christian Freeland, on numerous occasions, 
when she insisted a targeted approach was the only fiscally responsible way to go at it, she spoke about targeted in a completely different way. Her view of targeted was it was not a wide swath of Canadians. It would not uh, direct you know, benefits towards 18.7 million Canadians. It would be targeted so that it wasn't inflationary in nature. How can you call a benefit, a check that you're handing to people who make $149,000 a year targeted? Well, to be fair, I mean, this is even less targeted than that, right? Because the GST cut is actually going to benefit all Canadians. Um, and if yeah, you're It's not 40, targeted. I, well, it, it, that part particularly isn't. But the 75% that is going to working class, middle class Canadians is targeted specifically to that group. So if you're making over $150,000 a year, you know, unfortunately, you're not going to get that benefit. And if you're not working, unfortunately, you're not going to get that benefit. So, yes, it's while well, it's a big group, it is a targeted group and it's a group of individuals that I think you've seen all parties talk about finding relief for. In fact, I would be quite surprised if this doesn't unanimously pass through the House because there have been all of the parties in the House have tried to find ways to help working class Canadians right across the country. So to be clear, a liberal government now defines a working class Canadian as someone who earns something like $145,000 a year. Uh, well, no, that's not what I said. Everybody, you did. You said this would help working the, class Canadians. No, what I said is that you had to, that's the income test for whether or not you qualify. So this isn't, the 75% of this benefit is not going to benefit millionaires, right? This is making sure that the people that are going to work every single day are going to benefit directly. I, I think why I'm asking you very specific questions about the way in which you're characterizing things is because I have conducted a lot of interviews with various members of your cabinet, most especially the finance minister, and multiple mm -hmm. times I've put the question, hey, it's not just low-income people who are hurting through this inflationary crisis, which, by the way, peaked in June of 2022. It is a wider swath of Canadians. And I kept getting the response, well, that wouldn't be targeted. That wouldn't be fiscally responsible. And now you mm -hmm. and the prime minister are saying the exact opposite thing all these months later, which I think fairly leads Canadians to wonder whether you're just doing this for sheer political points at a time when you are politically desperate. No, I, I think that maybe I'm agreeing with, with your point of view, um, but disagreeing with the time that we're in. I mean, taking this kind of measure when we had, say, one month of being within the Bank of Canada's target inflationary rate, that might not have been as responsible as it is now that we've done it where we've been in, within that range for almost an entire year. Also, we know that inflation um, has been outpaced by wages for 21 months. We also know that with these measures, our debt to GDP ratio will continue to go down. So it's the fiscal discipline that's been put in place for the last two, year, two years, which has been very difficult for Canadians and, and difficult for government as well to make sure we stay within those fiscal guardrails. But that's what's actually allowed us to lower interest rates faster than any other country, to get to a low inflationary environment faster than any other country, and what is allowing us today to make this measure, which is going to help working class Canadians. Your government, though, was talking about those top line statistics for the last two years when we were asking questions and Canadians were asking you questions about additional help, right? Debt to GDP, we have the we have good ratios. Our investment is good compared to the G7. We kept getting these mm -hmm. comparators, right? I, mm -hmm. I, I don't understand why now it's okay to blow past the fiscal anchor that you set for yourself. We're not, we're not blowing billion, past the fiscal anchor, right? Forty the debt billion GDP dollar ratio deficit. with these measures will still go down. No, the the second fiscal anchor that the Minister of Finance set was a forty billion dollar deficit going forward. The parliamentary budget officer says that's already at forty seven billion dollars thanks to increased debt servicing costs as well as increased spending. You've just added more than six billion dollars to that spending so that is blowing well, past I mean, the fiscal anchor. I mean to be fair lowest deficit in the G7 lowest net debt to GDP ratio in the G7 our uh, the interest on our debt is now back to approaching less than uh, back to approaching one percent in the United States it's five percent in our country in the 90s it was six percent I mean there's a lot of people talking down the economy right now we are actually in a good fiscal position but what's happening is that Canadians aren't feeling the benefit of that until today. This is going to directly benefit working middle class Canadians. If it's a dual income household and both individuals are making less than $150,000, then both of those individuals are going to get $250. $500 tax free is a significant help 
at a time when Canadians have been struggling. To be clear, though, you're okay with blowing past one of the fiscal anchors that your own government set as long as relative to other countries in the GDP, we're still doing okay. I think that we that fiscal anchors are very important. That's why I am happy to hear the, when these measures were announced that debt to GDP ratio continues to go down, that we continue to have the lowest debt to GDP ratio and the lowest deficit. And now we have an opportunity to give a six billion dollar tax cut directly to Canadians at a time that they need it. Do you not think that there are other things that that money could be more beneficially invested in for Canadians? And I'm thinking of some of the programs that your party talks about have helped Canadians with affordability of daycare, where there are still their daycare subsidies rather, where there still remain 26 percent of parents across this country who are on waiting lists for spaces. There are six million Canadians without a family doctor. There are defense spending targets that, uh, you know, U.S. delegates and people who represent the US, incoming U.S. government say are way too far off. Like, are there no better places to put this money other than writing a check? Well, I think that's a, I mean, that's a discussion that we're always going to have. I mean, the Canada, uh, the ch child care program has been transformational. When you talk to families that are in the $10 a day child care program, the difference that that has made to their family is life changing. And yeah, there needs to be more spots and we've invested in that. Uh, we've committed to the 2% NATO target. That's an important thing to do, especially in a current context where we need to be talking about joint security and joint prosperity with our neighbors in the United States. Um, so there's always these choices to make, but I would say that the measure that we're making today, it's helping families, it's helping children, it's gonna help small businesses, it's gonna help restaurants. At the, it's kind of a win-win-win, and I expect, because of how beneficial it'll be for Canadians, I actually think that every party is gonna vote for it. Um, I could be wrong, but I'm very optimistic about it. Well, we're going to have your colleagues from other parties on next, and, and we're going to put that question uh, to them most certainly. But I did want to ask if it does... I'm not guaranteeing it, but yeah, I have I'll, a good feel. I'll ask them. I, I did want to put to you, though, if, if you and your government believe that this program will ultimately be such a game changer for Canadians when it comes to affordability, are you open to having that GST holiday last, last longer than two months? I, I mean, I think it's going to be a significant help at the right time. But as you've already discussed uh, very astutely in this conversation, we do have a fiscal framework that we have to stay within. This is over a $6 billion tax cut. If we get all the other provinces to join, it's going to be significantly more than that. For example, in British Columbia, right now, the announcement that I'm making is only 5% because that's the federal portion, whereas where you are in Ontario, it's 13% because it's HST. I'm hoping that Premier Eby will join us, so it'll be a 12% cut, um, but it's a very significant cut, and of course, we'll continue to measure our options as time goes on. So that's not a hard no to the possibility of it extending longer than two months? I lie. I don't think anything, I mean, all possibilities are always on the table, especially when it comes to making life more affordable for Canadians. Okay, on that note, I'll leave it. Minister Beach, I appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Bashi.